I'm Lisa Bauer and you're watching Dirty Dog Live Music and we're here today with veteran guitarist Norman Nardini from Pittsburgh. Hey Norman! Lisa, how you doing today and how are all you dirty dogs out there in Dirty Dog Land? You know, I know that you have a song about a dog. Well, it's a song I wrote in 1979 on the way to a gig in Weirton, West Virginia. And on the way to the gig I wrote the song and I sang it to my musicians who were in the truck at the time and they all laughed at me and said it was the worst song I had ever written. And I've been doing that song ever since. I absolutely love that song. The name of it is? Love Dog. Love Dog. That's right. And I actually had an album that had that name. I, and I released Love Dog a couple of times, I think in 1979 as a single, and then later again. And then in 1986, when I was on CBS, we, I had an album called Love Dog. Norman, you've been around performing a long time in our area. Yeah, yeah. Um, from Pittsburgh? I'm from the hills of Pennsylvania. Specifically? Pittsfield, Pennsylvania. Pittsfield, Pennsylvania. It's, an, it's a place I made up, but it actually is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're here today at Sprague Farm and Brew Works. This is a little bit out of our norm. We're doing something a little bit different today. We brought Norman up from Pittsburgh to play here. The first time I ever met you was here. You were doing a, a benefit concert. Here. I come up to hang with Jake, mm -hmm. one of my favorite musicians, uh, Jake Banner from the Erie area. I met him in the late 90s, and I, I saw him play, and I said, that farm boy is a full-grown man. Yes. And he still is to this day. Yes. He's really something. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, manful Handful, where'd that come from? The Manful Handful, the Wop with the Bop, the Guinea with the Skinny, the Guido and the Speedo, the Greaser who's a lady, please, uh, the Beauty on Duty, the High Priest from the Church of Rock and Roll on the I east side it. of Pittsville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on. Norman Roosevelt, Aloysius, Nicodemus, Amadeus, Valentino, Giovanni, Romeo, Bruno, Raphael, Lucien, Aloige Nardini. Out of all those names, I bet the thing that you probably like most is when people tell you that you are fabulous, and you are. Oh, you are a thank fabulous you very guitarist. Much. I've been I've been watching YouTube's and and uh, you're just amazing. You're a great performer. Oh, thank you very much. I'm a I'm a, a guy that's just done it his whole life, Lisa. I knew what I wanted to do when I was a little boy. Started working when I was about 14 and. All through junior high and high school, I knew what I was going to do with my life, you know. So I kind of grew up early, and that, that was in the 1960s. So I, I got a chance to to play when there was a lot of great live players and a lot of great live music around, and I was just so into it and so uh, transfixed on high-level performances, you know. Who, who was your inspiration back then? In those days, it was you know everybody. You know, it was the Beatles and it was the Stones, but it was also Chuck Berry and it was you know Muddy Waters and. Howlin' Wolf, and uh, you know, when I was, I went to music school in the early 70s, and I went to a, a nightclub to see Big Mama Thornton play, and she was playing, and uh, she didn't have a guitar player, and she was at this club for the whole week, so I went the first night to see her, and I said to her, hey, you don't have a guitar player, and I play guitar, so she let me play with her the whole rest of the week, and it was this real cool club in Boston, and it was like a lesson in life that I learned uh, I never forget, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I, when I played with her, I realized she was very mean, and she was rude to the audience. Is that right? Yeah, and she was a very bitter person. And me, as a, little, as a kid, you know, I didn't understand that, and it made me almost, it made me turn away from blues music for a while, because I couldn't understand her bitterness. And uh, as I got older, I started to realize and, and understand how she could have become that way. And, mm -hmm you know, respectful and understanding of how people's lives go and, and how the world isn't fair and all that stuff. But it was cool that I got to learn a lot of stuff like that young and she had a, uh, George Harmonica Smith was her harmonica player at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's cool, I got, at, at that time I got to see a mess of guys play. I got to see Muddy Waters up real close. Got to hang out with Willie Dixon. Oh, gosh. This was all in the early 70s. That you know? would have been fantastic. Willie Dixon was the exact opposite of Big Mama Thornton. Total gentleman, just a gracious man and just real loving it seemed like yeah. you know, I was much younger and like I say I was just a kid when I met him and he was but treat, he treated me like an adult you know and he seemed like he treated everybody he met with respect so it was weird you know to see how, how blessed you are to have had that I know I'm a lucky guy yeah. I got to hang yeah, out with really... them and all, all through my life I've been able to hang out with some different crazy people 
there, there's so many young people coming up today that, that want to do this and a lot of them they don't know the history of the music like you guys had all of that and you got to live it and experience it right. how do you feel now about um, people who who want to come up and watch you play and join you when you're on stage and well you know you live for that really when you do what I do sure you want you want it when somebody offers you their face and you're working you want to take advantage of that, you know, mm -hmm. because they're they're offering you something. They might not even realize they're offering you, but they're, what they're offering you is the chance to do them, mm -hmm. you know. And that's my job. And so when I see a fa an innocent face looking towards me for something, boom! Now I got a reason to live, and now I've got to figure out a way to take that face and make it smile and take it where I want it to go, you know. This is what being a veteran performer is all about. And, and it, it, it really is. is. It's about looking at an audience, sizing it up. Mm -hmm. How do I get these folks to be where I want them to be? How do I get them to laugh? How do I get them to like me? How do I get them to stick around long enough to learn to like my music? Right. You know, because I've always done my own music, but I never had any hit records. So I had to trick people into staying long enough to learn the music. So part of that was making them like me. Or making right. Well, them... it's an art. You know, it is. The entire package is an art. And you have to make it look easy. Right. That's the secret part. If, when you figure out that you make it look easy, then they don't realize they're being worked. They think it's just a natural thing. They don't realize that you're intellectually working them over. They just think working you're singing songs and stuff. Right. But when you're really into it and it's really who you are and how you are, it That's, goes deeper than that. Yes, there's, there's a huge difference between just being a band on stage, okay, playing some songs, Right, and doing what you do, which is performing and performing art. And so. tricking them. <laughs> tricking these you're innocents. Get, ready to get up here and perform for people, and you're going to let them tell them all that you're tricking them. Well, well I guess you are. You know, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, and that, it is okay. okay. Yeah, it's okay. Because we're talking about what it is that we do. <laughs> right. You know, I'm not doing it. We're talking about it at this moment. And then when we do it, you see, see how it, it happens. Okay. But when you're talking about it, and, and that's and when I'm talking to young musicians that want to learn this craft, that's how I try to teach them, and I try to, I don't try that's to important. tell them. No, it's important. It's more than just learning the chords and playing a guitar. And I, what I try to say, Lisa, is it's, I can teach you how to think better, because you have to learn how to think before you can even approach the work at a real high level. Mm -hmm. But once you learn how to start thinking better, then your mind teaches you how to always think better. And it, it makes getting old not be so terrible because there's new things, things to experience. Right, there are, there's always something new. Um, tell us some of the other things that you've done with your career. There's, there's so much about you to know. Well, I, like I say, I spent my early 70s studying music and, uh, and then it, right around the middle 70s, I got a job at a studio in Pittsburgh and started like playing bass and keyboards and transcribing music you know people would, in those days they didn't have computers so when somebody would write a song you had to listen to the record and write it on paper what the melody and the words were and then you send that in to get it copyrighted and i used to get work doing that kind of stuff or doing arrangements for strings or and i got the chance to play on some cool things with the skyliners and luke christie and terry bradshaw terry bradshaw weird stuff you know mm -hmm. and i did the steelers record the uh, original uh, we're from the town with the great football team i played bass on that record this wow. was all in the early 70s, and then I got in a band called the Diamonds, or actually Diamond, it's called Diamond, Diamond Rio. Rio. But not the country band Diamond Rio. Not the country band that came later. Right. We started in 1974, we were on Big Tree Records, and we had a regional hit record called Ain't That Peculiar. And we got to go out on tour a lot. We traveled with Ted Nugent and Rush and uh, Kiss and uh, Blue Oyster Cult in Kansas and all kinds of bands from that era. I so learned great, a lot. Yes, great experiences. A lot of big shows, Aerosmith. Oh. And uh, we actually played yeah, when um, Kiss did their ki eat or uh, what's their first live album called? Kiss, Kiss Alive, Kiss, Kiss Alive. Alive. That album. It was at, uh, at Cobo Hall in Detroit. We opened that show with the Diamonds. It was my first time ever being at a hotel. The same hotel was the headline act, and all the people dressed up like Kiss and the circus that went with it. It was insane. It was different then too. It was something different and new. It was. The makeup and the hair and the, the, whole, the big boots and yeah, it yeah, was all yeah. it was all the beginning of They were selling really insanity. <laughs> they did it and very America well. And America was buying. That's right. And we got to watch it up close. It was cool. 
my brother buys and sells antiques, and not just antiques, but collector's stuff. And he found uh, it was a plastic cup type thing in the shape of a uh, like a megaphone. It was a kiss thing. Sold it for fifteen hundred dollars on eBay. It's a piece of plastic with a kiss on it. It's right. amazing. So, but you're right. They were selling it. Fanatic. People were buying it. Fanatics. And I saw it up close, and, and I, it left an impression, you know, I learned something. It was 1975. With the Diamond Rio band, we did uh, three records. The first record was for Big Tree, and we had a regional hit called Ain't That Peculiar on it, which was a... I listened to that. I loved it. Which was an arrangement of an old Marvin Gaye number. Mm -hmm. And then we did another record called Dirty Diamonds, where we worked with the producer that did the first Aerosmith record, a guy by the name of Adrian Barber. And we cut it to Hit Factory up in New York, and it was very much fun. And then we did another local record that was more street level that was real cool called Rough Cuts. And then after that, I left that I left the Diamonds and started Norman Nardini and the Tigers in 1979. Yeah. yeah, I saw the pictures. You looked hot, Norman. You did. I was young and pretty like Conway Twitty. You was. I was coming on strong and girls. I was staying on long. <laughs> I was something. <laughs> You're still something. I was pretty like a girl. I was beautiful. <laughs> If, if you don't believe it, Google it. Google it. He's all over it. He's Google all over me. YouTube. Yep. But uh, then I, I worked with the Tigers until 1986. And then since then, I've kind of been on my own. And just as Norman Nardini and, and gone through a lot of different phases with that. You know, I, we got a chance to go over into Europe and play with uh, the Blues Brothers. We had a hit record over there in the early 90s. And, um, and we did three or four records for a small label in New York. And then for a while I didn't cut, I just wrote and studied through the early 2000s. But just a couple years ago I, I got excited and um, cut a new record and it's called Bonafide. I can't wait to hear it. What and songs are you going to do from it? We're going to do a couple tonight. There's a song on it called Son of a Gun, which is a song about total uh, family dysfunction, generation after generation after generation. And there's another song called End of the Line, which is your basic uh, rock and roll junkie song. Those, okay. those two we're going to do tonight for sure, and I'm not sure what others from the record. And then I got a new song that I just wrote a few months ago called Wonder. And I wrote it because the world's been getting a bad rap with these tsunamis. Yes. And uh, earthquakes and all these... Uh, tornadoes. Tornadoes and disasters happening. I, I wanted to write a song that reminded me of the old Louis Armstrong record, What a Wonderful, what a beautiful world. What a wonderful wonderful world. world yeah. And I say to myself, What a Wonderful World. So I wrote a new song a couple months ago, and it's called The World and All Its Wonder. And it's beautiful, and we're going to okay, do that. I can't wait to hear it. It's, it's real exciting. And then I have another new one I wrote called The Blues Come Blowing In. And it's also about dysfunction. It's about cheating and murder and... Uh, Justice and stuff like that. So we're going to get some really good Norman Nardini tonight. Yeah, yeah, we're going to play some real cool songs. Okay. And we've been working at it, you know, and the cool thing is now our live act, I have this five-piece act, and it's a lot of fun. My bass player, Harry, has been with me 22 years. He's not doing a gig, he's doing a sentence. He's doing 22 to life. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't think there's any time off for good behavior. But my new drummer is Bryce Foster, who I've had since the night who I used to work with in the 90s. He was a, in a band called the Brett Kane Band, which was this incredible underground jam band. And I would write with him and produce our recordings in, in the 90s. But he's just been with me a few months now, and he lives in Nashville. So it's cool to have his, he's a hillbilly boy out of West Virginia. And uh, it's real cool to have him and Harry as a rhythm section, because they, they're they big and broad and they play in capital letters. And you young musicians out I there. I like that. I like these young musicians to th remember what I said, playing in capital letters. Learn what that means. Big, easy Big. to hear. Throw it right down the middle. You got a better chance of people listening at the other end. And I also have my buddy Larry Seifers. We used to hang out in the 70s. We were some of the early hippies in the local scene in Pittsburgh. And um, we we're mostly actually hippies from the 60s. And he's playing keyboards and sax, and he's a dangerous man. He plays with a lot of pain. I love great sax. A lot of anger. Yeah. And, uh, and I also have my friend Vinnie Q playing guitar, who's like the ultimate rock and roll guitar player. He's just the coolest, simplest guitar guy out there. And uh, so it's a real neat five-piece band. We're playing for a live audience tonight. This is a little bit different. 
Um, we're taping it, of course. You know, what you're watching right now is not live. But uh, I'm very excited. So you ready to go do it? You know what? I want to wrap these people in my loving arms and take them to a place that only I can take them. Somewhere right beside rock and roll heaven. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah! <laughs> you dirty dogs. <laughs> I'm proud as a rotten buck to be here for Dirty Dog. And I'd like to start the evening off by saying, hey bartender, give me a shot. And a beer. <laughs> I could do a song from our latest record. The new record's called Bonafide. Because the truth is, we have been redeemed. And ladies and gentlemen, we is bonafide. Can I get a hallelujah here tonight? Hallelujah. Powerful. God bless you, darling. I want to touch you. I want to touch you. Hey, I got a new song. It's, I think, called How You Like Me Now.
after all the bets are taken. Still standing since when we first picked up. Cause you would have ever figured you'd still be here with me. Cause the shot we took one bite of blood. But ain't that just a technicality? The things that I should have done different. Say nothing that I will change. song from the same record for you, Bonafide. And this is a song about total family dysfunction that goes on generation after generation after generation. And it's a thing called Son of a Gun. Just like my own man 
is broken on my family tree how you guys doing tonight pretty good getting a couple of wonderful home brews right in your gut huh how could that be wrong you know what I like about that everything I'll tell you that right now hey we got a um, new song I made up just a couple months ago and it's a song about the planet earth E A R F. And Earth's been getting a bad rap the past few months. At least I just noticed it recently, and uh, I thought I'd want to stick up for Earth. And it's a brand new song called uh, "The World and All Its Wonder."
Thank you very much. Mr. Larry Seifers on a tenor saxophone, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Seifers. Mr. Harry Bottoms on the bass guitar. Harry Bottoms, right here. Vinny Q on the guitar. Mr. Bryce Foster on the drums. A lot of you folks know me. My name's Norman Roosevelt. Aloysius, Nicodemus, Amadeus, Valentino, Giovanni, Romeo, Bruno, Raphael, Lucien, Alawich, Nardini. And I want to touch everyone here tonight in a special and manful way. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Powerful. We want to thank you for hanging with us here and give us a chance to blow for you. It gives us a reason to go on with the rest of our lives. It gives guys like us a reason to live. Because what we live for is hanging out with folks like y'all and getting to see if we can get a smile coming on right on your face. <laughs> Victory! Winning! <laughs> hey, I got another song about total dysfunction. This song about cheating, murder, and uh, justice. And it's a song called The Blues Come Blowing In. This song also features... Mr. Larry Seifer's blowing face <laughs> on this particular number. <laughs> and the thing that Larry brings to this song is something I like to call pain. That's the same thing that Clubber Lang brought to the fight when he fought Rocky in Rocky IV. I don't know if you guys saw Rocky IV last night, but it was on. And when they said to Clubber Lang, what do you think's gonna happen in the fight? And Clubber went, pain. That's what Larry brings. I'm gonna put the pain in this song. Check it out, baby. It's a thing called uh, The Blues Come Blowing In. Made us up about a year ago. Somebody's gonna cry Somebody cheated Somebody lied and Somebody told somebody What somebody did Somebody hurt somebody And the blues Come blowing in bad feeling the hurt is gonna last somebody's got issues somebody can't get past somebody shot somebody now somebody's dead somebody got arrested and the blues come blowing Bad, bad feeling 
somebody's gonna fry. Someone reads a verdict. Somebody's fixing to die. Now someone's saving somebody. Somebody's last dinner. Somebody check it out. And the blues come blowing in. left to cry somebody wouldn't murder somebody fry now someone's burying somebody somebody chin to chin the tombstone says somebody hurt somebody and the blues See for y'all. Mr. Larry Seifers on the tenor saxophone, y'all. The blues come blowing in. That's a new song. We're gonna do a song for you about our hometown. I always tell people we come we come from uh, the hills of Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> Swissville, Pennsylvania. Spent many years in Swissville. Vinny still lives in on Woods on uh, Waverly. But uh, here's a song about our hometown. It's a thing called Pittsburgh, PA.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do one more song for the filming of um, the Dirty Dog TV show. And then we're going to play, play a while and just have some fun with y'all. But uh, this will be the last song that we're going to film. And uh, once again, we want to thank you for hanging out while we're playing. My name is Norman Nardini, and we have a new CD out. The name of the CD is Bonafide. We got them on sale here tonight. And you can, if you're looking, thinking about us, you can look us up on the internet at normannardini.com. Can I get a hallelujah? Powerful. This one's left over from the 80s. rock and roll song it's a thing called end of the line baby she come rocking to you real strong like daddy likes this ain't none of this candy music this is a, this is a more of a manful presentation the kind that we make coming from the hills of pencil tuck all man all day <laughs> ain't that a full-grown individual can i get a halu powerful
And that was a blast. <laughs> How you doing? How you like me now? What do you think? Squeezing, pleasing, throwing it and showing it all night long. <clears throat> that would be us. Norman, tell people, where can they find you? You can find me at normannardini.com, ladies and gentlemen. Come and check us out. We have all our gigs where we play, and I always write gig updates about what happened the day before, wherever we were playing. It has uh, CDs for sale and T-shirts for sale. normannardini.com. Come and check us out. Well, we will see you next time on Dirty Dog Live Music. Dirty Dogs. How you doing?
Kid. <laughs>